everyone and good afternoon. Uh, I'm happy to welcome you at this thematic webinar of School Education Gateway. Uh, today is a special day. Today is the last time we meet in such a remarkable year of 2020. So in this spe special occasion, we'll talk about student mobility and student mobility in the real and a digital world. Uh, my name is Ina, and together with me today is my colleague Asi, and we're delighted to support this webinar. And our speaker panel today is um, Josef uh, Brunsteiner, who has a 40 years of a career in education and extensive experience in coordination, communities and European uh, Erasmus Plus project, as well as a student and a mobility projects in several European countries. We also have uh, with us today Isabel Lasco, who is a teacher from France and who is an active member of the coordination coordination team for Erasmus projects uh, in her school. She will also showcase to us the activities of the Erasmus projects that she is working on. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be very interesting uh, webinar because student mobility has always been a very important element in the education. And this year it had been significantly challenged by the restrictions um, that uh, were, were imposed on physical mobility. And therefore it has given a room for um, this phenomenon to be developed also in a digital world. Uh, so I'm very much looking forward to listen to our speakers. As usual, I just want to point out that this webinar will be recorded and it will be published later on on the webinar page and on the YouTube channel of School Education Gateway as well. Feel free to post the questions uh, to our speakers in the question and answer box and we'll try to address as many questions as possible in the end of the webinar. So uh, Joseph, if you are ready to start, I'm happy to give you the floor and start this webinar. Thank you. Yes, I want to start with my presentation. Uh, about uh, student uh, student mobilities about uh, advantages disadvantages of student mobilities uh, my school has a lot of experience uh, with student mobilities we uh, started uh, when student mobilities have been uh, implemented in the Comenius project uh, some years ago, it was I think about 2010, 11, and uh, yes, it was very good for our school because our school is uh, very focused on languages. Uh, the students study English, French, Spanish, Italian, Russian, and Latin. We have also uh, a lot of connection to in other schools in Europe, and as I said, a lot of experience with. Uh, long-term mobilities for students. Uh, yes, what are the advantages of long-term mobilities? I think long-term mobilities uh, uh, increases uh, also throughout the school. It's very important. All the, also the parents are uh, 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 very interested that their children went uh, go out to uh, another school, to another country. Uh, to improve uh, their language competences or to learn a uh, new language uh, or fix a, be a better one. Also, it's uh, the personal uh, maturation uh, process enhanced very strong. The students uh, are more mature when they come back. Uh, they uh, have fixed new skills. Uh, they the knowledge, understanding, also uh, in the question of intercultural uh, build, uh, intercultural competencies, uh, and also the experience is shared with peers, with teachers, with the family. So that uh, these are very good advantages. Uh, this year. It was uh, because of Corona, of COVID, we couldn't do any uh, long-term mobility. The students wanted to go to uh, Finland and to Spain, but they connect connected or had contact to the students in the partner school via uh, digital uh, instruments. Yes, but our possible problems and difficulties uh, of uh, long-term mobilities. On the first, of course, homesickness. 
yes, always homesickness um, always arise, but I think uh, it's very easy to solve. Uh, we have, uh, we always had a system of mentors. We have mentor and mentors in our school and mentors in the host school. Uh, so uh, this mentor uh, can solve these problems very easily. Also problems with the host family or problems with classmates at the host school. Another thing is, uh, yes, how did, how do the students get the uh, subject matters from the home class? Uh, we did it always by uh, digital uh, instruments as, for example, e-twinning or uh, Microsoft Teams, etc. or also with emails or uh, similar things. Another very important question is how to assess the learning outcomes of student mobilities. Yes, this, uh, the, to assess the learning outcomes is very difficult and also often the result becomes visible uh, later, not uh, in the situation. Uh, progress in school should not uh, be hindered by mobilities. Our students, when they go abroad, are normally uh, good students, but whereby I have also I have had parents who have said that it doesn't matter if the student loses a year because uh, the overall positive effect of the mobility takes precedence over the post positive competition competition of the year. But that's uh, mostly singular uh, op uh, opinions. Uh, we always created a, a learning agreement. Uh, this learning agreement is made by the, by the mentors of the schools, of the host school and of the sending school and with the students. Uh, the student has to sign and also the mentors have to sign this uh, learning agreement so you can control uh, the success in, uh, in, the, in the school. Is student mobility recognized by schools? It's a, a very different uh, situation in the, uh, very different legal approaches on different countries. Uh, Austria has a very special situation. I will explain this uh, very special law in the next slide. Uh, I've heard the European Commission is working on automatic mutual recognition of upper secondary education qualifications and learning outcomes of abroad. Uh, very special is, as I said, our Austrian school law. Uh, the Austrian school law says if a student is more than five months abroad visiting a foreign uh, school in a foreign country, except uh, in a foreign language, it's not possible to visit a school in Germany for that reason, but uh, in the foreign language, then if the student uh, come back after five months or more, up to one year, he can upgrade into the next class without passing any exams. Uh, I think uh, this law is very singular in the whole European Union. What are the advantages of this Austrian school law? The student has no stress to pass the exam. Uh, so he can be really, uh, it's very easy for him to, to be, to stay in the school, to uh, take part on the lessons in the foreign school uh, without uh, exams. For that reason, uh, the best time for long-term mobilities for Austrian students and from the Austrian point of view is the 10th grade. This 
10th grade, the students are 15, 16 years old, and it's two years before the final exam. Final exam in Austria is called Matura. So the student has to the possibility to, uh, yes, to, to catch up uh, on missed learnings in the next school year. Uh, he can study the subject matter in peace and has uh, so uh, he has uh, no, no stress. And the reason is that's also the reason why our students are normally good, uh, very good qualified students. How do we select our students for uh, long term mobilities? The most important thing, of course, is the personal motivation to go abroad. Uh, also, uh, the support of the parents to go abroad. And also the experience of uh, elder students and friends plays a, a major role. If a friend has uh, did a long term mobility last year or a colleague of the class, uh, it's very positive. That was the reason why in our school uh, the number of students going abroad increased uh, every year. Then a very important thing is also the academic performance. Uh, good students are also more likely to go abroad. Uh, as I said, in our school, uh, normally uh, only good students want to go abroad. Another point is the maturity of the student. Uh, yes, uh, another very important thing for us is the principle of reciprocity. Uh, it's very difficult to find uh, families in abroad to host uh, students. So we use uh, this principle of reciprocity. It ha that, that means uh, a student has to host also uh, a student from uh, the partner's school. He has to accept it. Uh, this matter is a matter of balance. Uh, the, the parents, the families didn't get, uh, don't get any monetary benefits. Uh, uh, for the student accommodation, so it's fair if uh, to host another one and very important. Uh, so the intercultural contact is more intensive. Uh, often happens that the families uh, visited together in holidays and so the intercultural contact is not only between uh, the students, also between the families, between friends, uh, uh, and so on. Because of that reason of the Austrian law, uh, the length of the stay abroad is normally uh, more than five months, as I said, and we prefer a so-called 3-3-3 month concept. That means the first three months, for example, uh, the students are together in Austria. A Spanish student comes to Austria, maybe in October. They stay together for three months. To, they know each other better in that time. Then the Austrian student goes in the next three months, uh, for example, to Spain or Finland and stays there separately. And in the last three months, uh, the students are together in the host country. So that uh, also the problem of homesickness would not be so big because uh, they are friends, they get becoming friends normally. Uh, and uh, so it's easier for both uh, students to be abroad. Uh, if a student is, stays shorter abroad, for example, with uh, the Finnish schools, the Finnish schools uh, wanted only uh, stays up to four months. 
so three or four months, so we do the stays one after the other. So the students are always together and uh, yeah, with all these uh, advantages I said, uh, less homesick, less problems with the family, yeah. How do we communicate with our partner schools? Yes, we have the principle of mentoring. This, there is a mentor in both in the partner school and in the host school, and this mentor is responsible for the communication between the two schools to mentor to mentor, as well as the communication between the host parents the host school and the student. Uh, it's not good if in case of problems, the parents of the students communicate uh, with uh, the parents of the host, of the parents of the hosting family. Uh, it's better to communicate with the mentor and the mentor communicates uh, with the mentor of the other school. So it's easier to solve uh, problems. A mentor should always be in between as a connecting and balancing element. Uh, we have very good experiences uh, with the system uh, and the mentors of our partner schools and the mentor of my school, of our schools, they know each other personally. So there is also a connection, a friendship, and that's very important. Uh, if uh, problems uh, arise or problems increase. We use all the communication tools, uh, mobile phone, of course, email, social media and digital. In the last year, the students communicated or with uh, GoToMeeting or Microsoft Teams to see together because they had contact before the real meeting should start it. Uh, that was a possibility, but it can't uh, be, uh, it, it's not uh, like a physical uh, exchange and we hope that uh, students' mobility will be possible in the next year, in the next uh, uh, time. Uh, very important also is to create a so-called crisis plan. Uh, this crisis plan regulates the procedure in crisis situation. Uh, this plan uh, is signed by the mentors, the parents and the students. Uh, our experiences with, lo with long-term stays or long-term mobilities in the last uh, 12, 14, 13 years are very positive. Uh, the pupils uh, do not have any school problems after return home. Uh, the students can also take part on lessons uh, uh, also in, in a digital way. The pupils have to organize themselves how they receive the learning materials. Uh, the rolling materials of the home school uh, are mostly delivered by email or digital uh, uh, in digital version, but also in uh, students can take part on lessons uh, at the home school via, for example, Microsoft Teams via computer. Uh, especially when they have uh, free uh, lessons in the, in the partner school, in the host school. As I said, crisis management also uh, works via contact from mentor to mentor to the sending school uh, and the mentor to the host school. Uh, between the mentors, uh, would uh, we make, uh, uh, between the mentors, we make always uh, agreement, yes, a so-called learning agreement with between mentors and students. And this learning agreement is uh, 
defined uh, the lessons uh, who had have been have to be visited and the timetable of the host school. The student must attend the lessons scheduled in, in their own school, also in the host school. If the lessons are not offered in the whole school, for example, uh, there is no religious, uh, there are no religious lesson in Spain, but we have religious lesson in Austria. So the student student have uh, one uh, free lesson in that time. Uh, during this time, he has to work uh, on the project. Uh, every student who is uh, of our school who stays abroad has to work uh, on a special topic for the whole time. For example, uh, to compare the different school systems. This school system of the host uh, country the school si with the school system of the home country. Uh, when the student is back home, he has to explain to his colleagues to, in the class uh, this different in the presentation. Or the, stu the student has the possibility to take part in this free lesson on the lesson on the lesson in the home school uh, via Microsoft Teams or via uh, digital uh, possibilities. Very important, the, stu the students are not allowed to leave the schoolhouse before the end of the regular timetable because of security reasons. What are the result, results uh, of a long-term stay for a long-term mobility for the students? Uh, they improve their language skills or learning a new language, as I said. Uh, they get more personal maturity uh, based on this experience. They get friends get intercultural contact, uh, get more tolerance, and uh, became more self-confidence and tolerance, as I said, become, became even, even more European people, European students. How do we organize this procedure, this long-term mobilities? In the year before of this day, we ask interested people's pupils uh, for long-term mobilities. Uh, if the students are interested, we organize a meeting with parents for information about accommodation, legal situation in the host country, national laws for the protection of minors in the host country, information about the host school, and possible partner pupils. Then the pupils will stay in contact when we have selected the pupils. Uh, they, they go in contact with uh, his uh, partner, his in the host country. And it's very important to attend the mandatory pre-departure training of our national agency. Thank you very for your attention. I hope uh, you get you got some new information. It was interesting for you, and I am uh, interested and waiting for your question. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Joseph, for such an interesting um, presentation. Um, so we will address more questions in the end of the webinar. Right now, I suggest uh, for Isabel to uh, take the lead and continue with her presentation. And uh, later on, we'll address more questions. Uh, do you need to uh, pose your questions in the chat box? Thank you. OK, hello. My name is uh, Isabelle Lasco. I am a French English teacher based in Clermont-Ferrand. Uh, I'm going to make a presentation uh, of uh, the Erasmus Plus project entitled Lieu, uh, which means places in English. Uh, Lieu Incubateur de Mobilité Intelligente in French, uh, Responsible Mobility Incubator, which is a um, European partnership project on mobility. 
So uh, this uh, presentation uh, will be threefold. In a first part, I'm going to make a presentation of the project, starting with the goals we have set. Then I will be telling you about the organization. In a second part, I will show you some practical activities we made on TwitSpace to promote the interaction and the communication between the participants. And finally, uh, I will briefly tell you uh, how we have tried to adjust to the pandemics by imagining a few uh, digital activities. Um, so, presentation, maybe? Uh, I would like to introduce uh, the partners we're working with. Uh, sorry, here we go. So, um, um, six uh, partner schools from six European countries are involved in this uh, partnership. Uh, one in Valango, Portugal. Um, one in uh, Donostia, Basque Country, Spain. One in Rome, Italy. One in Kavala, Greece one in Munich, Pazing, uh, Bavaria, Germany, and uh, one in France. Um, the French, German and Portuguese uh, teams have known one another for quite a long time now. Some teachers have participated in various partnerships uh, over the last uh, 20 years. Um, the Spanish, Italian and uh, Greek teams joined the project in uh, 2019 and we've had the opportunity to meet twice already. Um, the coordinating team is the French one and French is the common language uh, of the project. So now I would like to um, present uh, the educational goals of uh, our project. Um, in fact, uh, the project was born uh, out of the observation that the new generation is far more uh, mobile than the previous ones. It is a generation on the move uh, who's used to, um, to traveling uh, with their family, with friends, uh, especially uh, thanks to the development of uh, low cost flights, for instance. Um, this generation is used to uh, taking uh, gap years uh, before or uh, after university. Um, some uh, uh, young people even do uh, internships uh, abroad, or uh, they take courses, uh, etc., etc. So um, this uh, generation is definitely uh, the connected one, the one who was born uh, with the internet who communicates mostly via social networks. But uh, still the question is, are these uh, young people really prepared uh, to such a wide access um, to mobility? Do they even realize uh, the variety of offers they are being proposed? Do they realize the hardships uh, disabled people, for instance, may come up with? Um, are they aware of the stakes, uh, of the assets, of the dangers, of the problems uh, entailed by uh, all the various forms of uh, mobility? So basically, the main goal of our project is to raise uh, our 12 to 19 uh, year old students awareness on the upcoming challenges of mobility. Uh, be it real or virtual, um, etc. The point is also to sharpen their critical thinking uh, so they could act as European uh, citizens, to make them think and get to work through uh, collaborative uh, work, to help them uh, gain uh, autonomy, uh, to uh, build their own opinion and then be able to, to act. Of course, it is uh, important uh, that they should know more about, uh, about Europe. They, they should uh, open up on Europe through, of course, interaction and connection 
uh, with uh, with uh, other young people. Um, sorry, many uh, many tools can help them reach uh, these goals, like the mastering of uh, common information and communication technologies to promote an opening on the world and on Europe, um, along, of course, with the, uh, the learning and the practice of foreign languages. So now um, I'm going to present you the different areas of work. So um, to meet uh, these goals, uh, the project offers common learning educational activities focused on the discovery of the different sources of mobility to show their advantages, but also the problems they might trigger off. So indeed, those activities uh, revolve around four uh, areas of work. Uh, ecological mobility, reduced mobility, digital mobility and cultural mobility. Four important notions run through the project. Uh, the notion of consumption, uh, can, which can be linked with ecological mobility, for instance. Um, and the point is to promote the idea of an eco attitude, uh, that is to say, to get a critical thinking about uh, the over consumption of mobility. I mentioned, for instance, previously uh, that uh, it's quite common now to uh, travel with a low cost company, but this has consequences. Uh, for example, this year, uh, we chose uh, the French uh, teachers, the French team chose to travel by train uh, rather than to fly to Munich uh, last February. Uh, and that was a choice because we thought that uh, traveling by train was uh, cleaner than, than flying, for instance. Um, but this uh, change of uh, attitude requires a transition period. Hence, uh, well, the, the idea of support in the, in, the, in the sorry energetic transition, which could be both uh, digital and uh, cultural. Um, it's all, always very important also for us to share uh, good practices. Uh, and uh, to cooperate. Uh, for example, um, we have some examples of infrastructures set up to carry out green mobilities in the field of transportation uh, in Germany. Uh, we have also implemented workshops where good practices uh, can be shared. And uh, what is uh, crucial, of course, is the commitment of the participants in group activities, and it's a priority uh, for us. So let's talk about uh, the way we organize ourselves. Um, six transnational activities, uh, meetings, sorry, gathering the six delegations are planned to uh, implement learning, teaching and training activities. Um, centered around uh, the specificities uh, of the hosting schools and countries. Um, we have also decided that uh, twice a year, uh, one of the schools would host two teachers and two uh, students, uh, which is an experience, an opportunity for the students to experience a cultural immersion with the host uh, family. So this uh, year, uh, two students were supposed to experience a, long, uh, a longer mobility, a long mobility, a uh, French one and a German one, but uh, unfortunately it had to be cancelled due uh, to the, uh, the pandemics. Um, we uh, also have uh, two transnational meetings uh, which are planned to um, implement and organize all the various activities, uh, one to launch the project and another one to conclude. And all in all, uh, 16 learning activities are planned. So here um, is uh, 
number of uh, examples of uh, learning activities. Um, shall I show them or not? Okay, brainstorming, uh, traveler's day, walk in my, my shoes, uh, travel diary, etc., etc. Um, in the respect of a uh, quality approach, a regular assessment uh, measures the impact of the project on the target uh, audience. You can see a survey, it's in French, I'm afraid. Uh, these activities are assessed all along the project, both by the students, but also by the teachers, Okay, as you can see here, um, these, uh, as you can see, the assessing tools are uh, easy and fun to use. They do not require much time. Uh, the students answer with, uh, you know, emojis about the quality, the atmosphere, the organization, etc. And they do not have uh, much to, to write, so it's quite uh, easy and quick. So, I am now uh, going to tell you about the uh, making of. Uh, we have uh, used a collaborative uh, tool, uh, namely a Padlet, to organize a brainstorming and to classify our ideas into different uh, categories. And I'm going to show you maybe, here we go. Uh, so here you have the goals, uh, objective in French, the activities, assessment, uh, expected impacts, the uh, specific tasks, etc. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this. Um, to communicate, uh, virtual meetings have been organized uh, via twin space so i don't know if we, we we don't have maybe we don't want to go on twin space right now but um, the mission of the project is also to expand uh, its uh, network by relying on the expertise of local players and relevant stakeholders to bring more maybe more scientific and educational insight and to acknowledge and value uh, the project so now I'm going to present uh, the second part, student uh, mobility. Um, we, um, to prepare our students for their mobility, we have developed uh, uh, common uh, tools. Um, so first, a call for candidates. Uh, it's, a YouTube, it's a YouTube link, so I'm not too sure I can show it to you. Uh, the students uh, who are eager to apply, who are motivated and willing to, to uh, try this experience, should send a, a letter, a cover letter or a video uh, to their teachers. Uh, two students are chosen according to a specific criteria, specific uh, selection uh, criteria. Okay. I'm just trying to show you, but doesn't seem to be working. Sorry about that. Um, here we go. Here we go. Here are the criteria. So we have a list of criteria. Um, the um, students are, are then uh, prepared to, to their mobility. Uh, given a preparation uh, sheet uh, to uh, help the teachers set up pairs according to common uh, tastes or interests uh, about the passion, the music, favorite color, favorite movie, etc., etc., and to enable, yes, I, as I said before, the students to know a little bit more about their pen pal. Um, a roadmap uh, with uh, useful information uh, is uh, given to the students. It's a video. I'm not too sure it's going to be working. Um, it's so um, we yes, here we go. OK, so that's what 
we call a uh, roadmap. Okay, we have many uh, useful information along with uh, word uh, baggage uh, with educational uh, material, uh, which was created, by the way, by students from a previous, sorry, uh, from a previous Erasmus Plus uh, project. Okay, so uh, we uh, have been using a twin space to uh, cement the relationships. So it's a very useful tool, a tool to communicate and exchange, and uh, many uh, many relevant resources can be found there. There is a range of icebreaker uh, activities. It's a place where the participants can interact and share results, share tools, uh, showcase their project, and it's also a place where uh, you can keep uh, the all the, 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 the documents uh, and uh, it's like the mem a memory. So here is, uh, here is a few uh, example of uh, the twin space. OK, for example, uh, where do we come from? So people uh, introduce where they come from. Uh, we have uh, organized a carpool karaoke uh, to get to know each other. Uh, uh, it was uh, a lot of fun for everyone. Um, and of course, it's Christmas season, Christmas time. So it's always uh, nice to, uh, to uh, say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Um, there are a few uh, examples of uh, brainstorming activities here. A cal uh, calendar has been made also, um, and a few quizzes uh, on different the different uh, the different countries. There is a photo exhibition on uh, what's in my bag, uh, what's in my backpack, uh, where the the students had an opportunity to to uh, introduce themselves through uh, what uh, they keep in their backpack. Um, OK, so I think I'm going to go back to my presentation. Um, OK, it doesn't seem to be working anymore. OK, so we are uh, very, we are deeply convinced uh, that uh, the uh, intercultural experience is really crucial since uh, we've had many positive feedbacks uh, it's an opportunity for the students to travel abroad uh, and to improve their knowledge of uh, the European cultures uh, and meet different people. Um, some uh, of them had never flown, for instance, they had never been on a plane. Uh, so that's quite uh, uh, an important uh, experience for them. Others had never left home for uh, more uh, than a week. So uh, here again, it's uh, quite an interesting experience. Um, so it's uh, the project is also clearly uh, a means to offer young people who do not have uh, the chance to uh, to travel to do so. So it is definitely a cultural asset and opening on the world to discover traditions, to build uh, friendship. Uh, and connection. It's uh, also a way uh, to get out of one's comfort zone because you have to adapt, to adjust. And it's also a, um, a way to uh, experience gratitude. Um, so for the teachers, uh, these uh, transnational activities reinforce the motivation um, also for, for, well, for, the, for the children as, as well. Um, it is also uh, important to note that the mastering uh, of the new skills uh, discovered throughout all the activities are valued uh, through the Europass um, ceremony at the end of, uh, of the stay. So I'm going to show you now a few, uh, oops, sorry, uh, student testimonies, very positive ones. Um, 
So as you can see, uh, they uh, are my experience in this meeting was magical. This town will always be a second home to me, piece of our hearts, etc. So um, I'm going to now move on to the last uh, part, part three, the project and COVID-19. Um, as everyone else, we have tried to adjust uh, to uh, the COVID-19 pandemics. We've tried our best to, uh, to carry on and to find solutions to, for example, uh, the transnational activities have been postponed when possible and the activities that were planned uh, have been rescheduled online. Um, of course, some activities are on hold right now, especially due, well, due to lockdown and to this lack of uh, mo mobility. Uh, yet, uh, new activities adapted to uh, the circumstances been added and uh, so we had to meet with the new uh, new challenges. I am going to show you maybe uh, one or two of them. So we've asked uh, our students to express themselves um, and to tell them about their daily life um, during lockdown or uh, you know uh, during this uh, pandemic and to share their feelings uh, uh, about the situation and about the lack, the privacy, the, 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 where, yeah, the lack of, of liberty uh, and of mobility. Uh, so here we have uh, a long text by a, um, a young lady who uh, says that she has been reading a lot. She has uh, tried her best to make the most of it. Um, we have uh, also uh, organized uh, um, radio uh, program uh, about mobility uh, during the Erasmus uh, days. Uh, I'm not sure I can show you, maybe, yes, maybe I can show you a little bit of uh, this experience. It's in French. Um, so um, it was a way to use the, the skills and the knowledge acquired all along the project. Um, and, um, and some students in Portugal have created a, um, a website uh, because they uh, couldn't have uh, the opportunity to do uh, their professional internship this year. So. Uh, thanks to uh, our project, uh, they have been able to complete their curriculum, so we're quite happy about that. And uh, we also have uh, a website uh, that uh, you can see right now, uh, where the students can, uh, which has been set up during, uh, the, during lockdown. So to conclude, we could say that the current situation has made it clear that uh, digital mobility is definitely part of our daily life, hence uh, uh, the importance of mastering its code. And uh, I think that that's it. Thank you for your time and attention. Excellent. Thank you so much, Isabel. So for much, such a Isabel bright illustration of this uh, project. Uh, so right now we have some time to address questions and uh, we already received a couple. So while we are waiting for more questions to come, I could already address uh, some of them to our speakers. Um, so Josef, uh, we've received a couple of questions while you were presenting. Um, so one question sounds like um, this seems to be a very good structure based on years of experience. Do you find that most of other schools and countries also have this level of planning? Are there certain improvements to make across Europe, in your opinion? Thank you. OK, uh, yes. Uh, yes, I think uh, we have a very special situation in Austria because of our law. So it's very easy to uh, go abroad because uh, of uh, the possibility to come back without any stress, any exams. 
So uh, and the structure, we organize the structure uh, with our experience. As I said, we started uh, the long-term mobilities uh, when this program started with Comenius, uh, 12 years of 30 years ago. And we have sent, I think, uh, um, four or five students per year abroad to different countries, to France, to Finland, to Spain, to Italy and so on. And yes, I think uh, it's very easy for us because of our law. I have seen the problems uh, with, uh, for example, the Spanish students. They have to pass all the exams afterwards. They send uh, the exams to my school. They have the exams in my school. They send them back for the correction. It's much, much more complicated. So yes, I think uh, we are in a very good position in Austria about that. Thanks so much, Joseph. Very good to know. Um, and the next question we have for Isabel. Uh, Isabel, um, what do you think? How to assure that the contract for a virtual mobility is fulfilled and which are the costs that can be supported by the project? I cannot hear you. You have to unmute. OK. Is that, is that OK? Sorry. Again. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Yes. sorry. What the question was, sorry. Ah, the question was how to assure that the contract for virtual mobility is fulfilled and which are the costs that can be supported by the project? Well, that's a difficult question. I'm not too sure I can answer that question <laughs> myself. That is too much for me to answer. Uh, I'm sorry, I cannot answer that question. Yeah, no problem. Uh, then we can move forward. Um, so we have another question that was uh, addressed to Josef. Uh, so Josef, could you please tell us more precisely what the previously mentioned crisis plan looks like? Uh, yes, the crisis plan. Uh, we have uh, information about the medical uh, situation, about the medical uh, standard of the students. They have to go to the doctor. They got uh, a letter about the uh, medical situation and when they go and did the host family gets all this information. Also, uh, we have also the crisis plan uh, when, yes, when some unseen situation happens like uh, this COVID or like uh, political uh, problems in the country to bring back the students, all that, that things are organized in this crisis plan. Excellent, thank you. Um, so there is another question for Isabel. Isabel, could you um, could you explain who decides the selection criteria? Okay, the teachers uh, do. Uh, the team uh, together decides of the criteria. Um, the um, they have to 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 be to be part of this project. The students have to participate in the activity to show that they are willing to, very eager to participate, to be very motivated, and then. Uh, the teachers decide uh, which one. Well, after we have, of course, uh, read their application uh, letters and uh, watched the videos, and we decide uh, which uh, which one would uh, be the best to uh, to go. Uh, excellent. Thank you so much. I think we'll take two more questions. Um, so, uh, Josef. There was another question for you. Uh, sounds like you have a great process with the partner schools. For how long you have been working with the partners, for example, the partners from Finland and in Spain? Uh, with the Spanish school, we worked uh, more than uh, 25 years. Uh, we started with Comenius projects, with uh, Erasmus Plus projects. Uh, with the Finnish schools, we work since uh, more than uh, seven years. Uh, yes, uh, we have a, a very long uh, contact to the schools and that's very important because that's the reason why the teachers know each other, the mentors know each other. Uh, there's a friendship between the mentors and between the teachers in our school and in uh, the host school. So it's much easier to handle uh, problems. OK, thank you. And uh, one last question we have for Isabel. Um, 
also as a feedback, great presentation, Isabel. Could you please explain how the mastering of student skills is enhanced through the Euro Europass ceremony? Um, I myself uh, have not been part of a Europass uh, ceremony. I have, I'm new in the project and this project, so I'm going to ask my colleague maybe uh, if she can help me with that. <laughs> Comment on met en avant le, la cérémonie des les skills des, des élèves On fait une petite fête. Euh... So, yeah, there's a, a celebration. There's a celebration, uh, and you know, you, you you give the the diploma to uh, to the students, um, and they go home with their diploma, and it's very rewarding. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Excellent. Okay. Um, Thank you so much. I think uh, for, for the time being, we answered more or less all questions that we have received and we are uh, coming exactly uh, to the time to finish. So I would uh, try to finalize it and draw this webinar to the end. I want to thank our speakers for being with us today and for such a fruitful contribution that you gave. Um, I think it was very interesting and very bright illustration that you gave. So it was really uh, great to have you on board today. And I also want to thank our audience, our participants, for being with us today and for um, your attention. Uh, so a couple of practical matters um, that is usually very important to mention too. So as you know, this webinar was recorded and uh, you will be able to um, see the recording and um, also up, also see the presentation that the speakers were using during their during the, during the webinar. It will be published soon uh, on the webinar page. And um, what's also important, we have the as you, you can receive certificates and uh, to do this, um, it's important to be registered on School Education Gateway platform and be logged in on Teacher Academy. And uh, we just published in the chat the link for a feedback survey. So once you submit the feedback survey, you'll be redirected for the automatic do download of your uh, certificate of participation. So please um, make sure that you save this link so you don't lose it once the webinar is over. And um, that is it from our side. I want to thank you one more time and I wish you a wonderful winter break. And I'm looking forward to uh, see you all again next year with a fully recharged batteries. And um, yes, congratulations for this, for completing this challenging year and um, uh, have a nice evening and a uh, nice week ahead. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank Goodbye. You very much. Thank you. Thank you very bye much. Bye bye. bye, bye. Have bye. nice uh, Christmas holidays. Bye bye. bye. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for me. Bye everyone. Thanks so much for the presentations and for the participants.